everyone, it's Dee here again for your Wild Card Wednesday adventure um, in all things crafty. Um, I'm still filming from my home studio. Uh, I hope you've been joining in some of the workshops we've been doing. Um, if this is your first time here, then I hope you enjoy it. And uh, I normally teach these classes at the Attenborough Arts Centre which is Leicester University's arts venue. Um, but like with lots of arts venues, it's still closed um, and it will probably be opening um, over the next few months. So keep your eye out for that because there's, there's always lots of creative activities going on there. Um, so uh, what else is there to say? Now then, I've been thinking about this and I've made an executive decision to try not to use quite so much plastic because A, it's really expensive and B, it's really annoying because you can't get rid of it. So uh, there will be some classes where we do use plastic, um, like maybe some latex gloves or the plastic apron. But I've decided that I'm, uh, you know, you're all grown ups. You know how to wash your hands. At least I think you do. So we're going to wash our hands after a session instead of peeling off the plastic gloves and throwing them away. So that's my first slight change. As I said, I'm not ruling out that I might use them sometimes depending on how messy the project is. And the second thing is the plastic apron, which we, we were using to cover the table and ourselves. Now, Again, you know, it's just unnecessary. If you've got some scrap paper or you've got a tablecloth or an old bit of cloth or a towel or whatever it is, put that on your table. When you finish the project, you can either, if it's paper, you can recycle it. If it's some kind of material, you can give it a shake down and chuck it in the wash. So uh, I'm gonna ditch the plastic apron scenario as well. Um, I'm just going to work on some paper, some scrap paper that I had kicking about in my office. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's all. Uh, the extras you might need this week are some water. Um, and if there's anything I've forgotten, I'll tell you as we're going along. Um, so I'm going to turn the camera around now and we'll open up the box, which you should have got from reception and we will begin this week's class okay okay so here we are here's my lovely box full of mysteries uh, which we will open up and see what's inside the mystery box this week folks Ta -da! oh it looks nice and simple this week um this week Make sure I'll put that in. A lump of clay. Now that is in plastic, but what I'm using for you is plastic that I'm recycling. Um, paintbrush. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to give you paint, so that might not be in there. Um, I'll see at the end of the project. Two cocktail sticks and a lollipop stick. Now, uh, I've just thought the extras you might want is a simple knife from your kitchen drawer. Not a sharp one. We might need that, we might not. Okay, so let's begin. If you get out your clay, you can use it all or you can just use some of it, it's up to you. And I think what I'm gonna do is just take some, put that lump to side, keep it into the plastic so it doesn't dry out because it's really hard to work if it does. So if you get your lump of clay, whatever shape that takes, and we're going to start, uh, I want you to copy the shape that I'm making. So I'm going to start by pulling it round And I'm just using my hands to squish the clay 
down. Now, what I've said to you before in the past with air drying coat, if you've got very hot hands, it will dry out quickly. So that's why you need your water on the side. So you can just dampen it down slightly. I want you to... Make it into this kind of pear shape. Uh, if you have a look at it, even it up. And that's going to be rounded. Then what I want to do is turn it over and um, we're going to get, now you, if you haven't got a knife, use your lollipop stick, which should work. My clay is quite hard, yours might be a bit softer. I want you to start gouging out from the inside to make it more hollow. These bits that you're taking out, you can put with that other piece in the plastic bag because we'll use that. And um, if we just make the walls about sort of a couple of centimetres thick, you should be able to feel where you're digging with your hand that's supporting the clay. Oops, we gouged round. And take out what we don't want. Okay. So all that extra that you've just taken out, squish it together because you can always make two of these. Put it with that lump and put it in the bag. Do the bag up so there's no the plastic, so there's no air in it, so it stays moist. Okay, so we've got our hollow underside, and we can just start by smoothing this round with your hands. I might have said to you before, but if you've got really fancy long fingernails, working with clay can be quite a challenge because it digs into the clay as you're working it. But as I work with clay quite a lot, I've usually got reasonably short fingernails. So it's not too much of a problem for me. However, my fingernails are always, they always seem to have clay in them permanently dirty fingernails. My mother would be appalled. So I'm just smoothing it all off to neaten it up. And if I put it down like this, it's going to flatten it out. And I'm going to make it nice and even on the shape kind of like an oval, I suppose, at the moment, an oval shape, like that. Squish it out. Turn it over 
Now then, let's have a look at this. Okay, so I'm going to start pushing this bit down. I wonder how long it will take you to guess what it is we're doing. <laughs> That's if it actually looks like what I've got in my imagination. <laughs> there is that. What's in my mind and what actually comes out are two very different things often. That's a bit big, so I'm going to just pull a bit of that off. And I'm going to, I want to just smooth that over. So you keep looking at it. If you've got it in front of you, directly in front, you hold it up. You can see where I want it to kind of be a, like a round shape like this. And we're going to go. Oh, I wonder if you now that at that point, this could be a number of different things. If you're a mind reader, you might guess what it's going to be at this point. Yes, I could turn it into something completely different at this stage, but I'm going to stick with what I originally wanted to make not let myself get distracted by all sorts of other exciting shapes. Of course, you know, as usual, if you want to make your own thing, that is entirely up to you. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my lollipop stick and I'm going to do this. I want to make an indent around here like this. And I'm going to just push that down so it doesn't stand up rigid. And I'm going to smooth that over with my fingers like that. Now I'm going to put a tiny dab of water on my fingertips so I can smooth that over. Like that. Because I must admit that without the plastic, when you've got plastic gloves on, it uh, stops the clay drying out so fast because your hands are hot and they will absorb the moisture from the clay. Uh, so without the gloves on, it does dry out a bit more. But, oh, look what I'm creating here. Can you see what that might be? Move that out of the way. Put it in profile. Can you see? I've made a little tiny snout. Now, what little animal has a tiny little snout like that. <laughs> Can you imagine? Okay, so now what I want you to do is we're going to put it down. And I want you to, let's see how we can do this. We're going to start making some little, I wonder if it's easier to add some bits. Oh yeah, maybe we will. Scrub that, don't do that. Let's get some of this clay out. Let's see if we can do this. Right, first of all, actually, yeah, I changed my mind as I go along. I'm not sure we will do that, but we can make some little eyeballs. So if you get a tiny two tiny balls of clay. 
roughly the same size. Now, I know I only said um, those two extras was the knife, but actually, I think if you've got a pencil handy, I'll show you why. Let's bring in a pencil. I'm going to use the end of my pencil to make some little sockets. I'm going to get a bit of water on. Oop! Oh, I've dropped it in the water. Let's get the next one. Let's pop that little ball of clay into that eye socket. Let's get another one. Oh, I've made my fingers. You only need a tiny amount of water on your hands to make it sticky. Let's put that one there. And by going round like this, you smooth it off. Just make sure they're both in the right spot. Googly eyes. And I want you to, with your cocktail stick, I want you to just go round like this with the edge of the cocktail stick to define the little bobble of a nose, like that. Just roll it very gently. like that and if you want you could put two tiny little tiny little snouts a bit more water tiny dab of water on my nose um, not my nose, on the eyes. I want you to I'm just drawing round like that with the end of my cocktail stick Ooh. and the same on that side just a very slight definition Oh, he looks a bit like he's been beaten up now. Looks like he's had a, a rough night on the town, looking a bit tired. <laughs> okay. So you can play around with that, but you get the idea. You can always, actually, what you could do is just break your cocktail stick in half. So you've got a flat end as well as a pointed end. Um, but cocktail sticks are brilliant for kind of making these very simple little adjustments. I'm just going to go around that again. You can always put a little eye bobble in there too for his little... Now, I think what we'll do is, as well, if you turn it upside down, we'll have... Let's put him a little mouth in, or her. Oh, look, that's cute. Let me put my camera where I can see it, what I'm doing. That's it. Okay. Oh. It's a bit lopsided, but he's smiling. Now then, let's have a look at him from the front. Okay, let's cover up my table so you've got the white so you can see better. Okay, so now what I want you to do is we're going to 
tweak it okay so I'm going to start doing some lines now I might use my pencil or I might use the cocktail stick let's start off with the cocktail stick I want you to start doing some lines like this you're going to scratch all over To give your any ideas what it is hedgehog that's right it's a hedgehog i want your hedgehog to have some wonderful you see we can't really make the spikes for a hedgehog because i know what you like in your rooms and they'll get knocked off and bashed about and fall off and break so i think the scraping is it gives an idea of hedgehog wouldn't you agree? I mean, if you want to make the spikes, you can, but I'm going to do lines. You can leave them quite rough. So that side, they're going to go that way. And this side, they're going to come over and do this. So if you have any paints at home in your rooms, you can paint him up any colour you like. Various shades of grey or various shades of brown or various shades of black or white or whatever. I'm not putting any paint in this week. I don't think I'm going to put paint in because I think I don't want to because actually these look pretty great when it's dry in the natural colour of the um, clay. So I'm just going around his little head or hers. Oh look, a little smile. Let's make it a bit smilier. Let's make it go up like this. Yes, I am lucky to be alive. Sorry. Scratch it up all over. And then what I want you to do then is uh, with your hands, just pat it down because those knobbly bits can be sharp when it's dry. So if you pat it, they'll stay on but they won't scratch you. Oh, she has got a nice little smile on her face. So I'm going to just do a bit more around there. Now on her little bald face, what you can do is you could, let's just do some tiny little marks. Watch very closely. I'm just going to do with the end of my cocktail stick some small little like this around her eyes or his it whatever you want it to be right down to the little snout The reason I'm not going to put any paint in is because there are so many different um, colours that you could paint this and I don't want to put in tons of paint that you might not want or use so I'm just going to opt for um, the natural clay on mine. Let me come round, round here. Oh, 
like that. Okay, so what you could do is get your lollipop stick and if you want to make that a bit more defined around the head, you can just gouge in a little bit more like that. Okay. This is Tiggy Winkle. That was a hedgehog in a Beatrix Potter story. So this isn't just a hedgehog. No, it's not an ordinary hedgehog. What your hedgehog is going to now become is, this is why I want you to get some pencils because, right, let me go and get some more pencils and pens, pencils and pens, everybody. Pencils and pens and assortment of all of them. Okay, so I've got an assortment here. I'm going to start making some holes that go all the way through. I'm going to twizzle that pencil in like so. And I'm going to twizzle. Now these bits you can put wherever you like. Let's use a big old. What I want is I'm going to do one for my sharpies on the side. and one for another Sharpie over here. You can always make these bigger, these holes. Get your pencil in and give it a good twizzle round. Like that. I'm going to do another one here. another one here one here and one here then we can always go over with the cocktail stick on those edges to disguise them And then if we turn him over and turn tidy that up, you just get your lollipop stick and pull out those rough ends. So you can put makeup brushes, you can put um, pens, pencils, you can put chopsticks, um, you could even put things like um, cotton earbuds, anything you like in your hedgehog holder. Let's just go through with those again. You can always do that with your hands too. Like so. Stab. Prod, poke. There we are. So now then, folks, let's see what we have here. So I'm going to put a couple of pens, biro, paintbrush, ooh, sharpie, pen, um, uh, doobie, what's it? Uh, let's see what else I've got. 
Why can't I find any pens when I need them? I've always got millions of pens kicking about. Ooh, there's a pen. There's a biro. There we go. <laughs> so now you will always know where there's going to be a spare pen. It's in your hedgehog holder, of course. Ta-da! <laughs> there you have it, folks. Isn't she wonderful? So you can let that dry out, put her in the windowsill or the um, radiator, paint it if you want to paint it, or just leave it raw like this. It goes light grey. And uh, let me just turn the camera around. So, ta-da! I'm rather pleased with that. <laughs> it's come out better than I thought. Your hedgehog pen holder. Um, you should have enough clay. You might want to make a single one for a, your favourite pencil or pen. <laughs> Um, but there'll be enough, there should be enough clay for a little something else, but just keep it, oops, keep it wrapped up. Oh, I look so scruffy, don't I? Keep it wrapped up to keep it moist. Um, dampen it down. You don't need very much water. If you use too much water, it just goes into a big slimy mess. So use the water sparingly. Um, and yeah, that's it for this week, folks. I hope you've enjoyed that. Again, we'll be doing something completely different next week. Another exciting project with me, D Barnes. And if you want to see what I get up to in my real life, actually, no, it's not really real life, in my other life, um, you can follow me on Instagram if you like. You can find me at D Barnes Designs on Instagram or I've got a Facebook page as well. D double E. D. I wonder if you can see that. D. I've got it written on there. D Barnes Designs, anyway. So, until we meet again, everybody, stay safe, stay well, stay together, stay friends, and um, above all, stay creative. Till next time, everyone. Bye.